a reading from the prophet Isaiah. I, the Lord your God, I am holding you by the right hand. I tell you, do not be afraid. I will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob, proverb, Israel, puny might. I will help you. It is the Lord who speaks. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. See, I turn you into a threshing shed, new with double teeth. You shall thresh and crush the mountains and turn the hills to chaff. You shall winnow them, because <coughs> the wind will blow them away. The gale will scatter them. But you yourself will rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and the needy ask for water, and there is none. Their tongue is parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not abandon them. I will make rivers well up in the barren heights and fountains in the midst of valleys, turn the wilderness into a lake and dry ground into a water spring. In the wilderness I will put cedar trees, acacias, myrtles, olives. In the desert I will plant juniper, plane trees and cypress, side by side, so that men may see and know, may all observe and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. The, the Lord, Lord is kind and full of compassion, compassion slow to anger, anger and abounding, abounding in love. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The, the Lord, Lord is kind, kind and full of compassion, compassion slow, slow to anger, anger, abounding in love. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God, to make known to men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. You rule last from age to age. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to us, Lord, with your peace, that you, we may rejoice in your presence with sincerity of heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds. I tell you solemnly, of all the children born of women, a greater than John the Baptist has never been seen. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Since John the Baptist came up to this present time, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and the violent are taking it by storm. Because it was towards John that all the prophecies of the prophets and of the law were leading. And he, if you will believe me, is the Elijah who was to return. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father Roy was smiling at me in a knowing way. Because time is tight this morning, I had said that I wasn't going to preach, um, but I can't resist uh, at least uh, a thought um, about that gospel and about John the Baptist. Because it's been occurring to me, this seems a ridiculous thing to say, and I know it's been obvious uh, for the 35 years that I've been preaching about John the Baptist, but it only sort of crystallized slightly for me over the last few days that how often perhaps we hear those words, either in the music that we heard before Mass uh, or in these Gospels about John the Baptist's cry and that prepared the way of the Lord. 
And because of the season in which we are, our minds immediately go towards uh, celebrating, preparing uh, for that birth. As you know, the first part of the Advent season is actually looking to the second coming of the Lord. And that is surely actually underlined by this central figure of John the Baptist. Given he is a contemporary in age of the Lord, his words cannot possibly be referring uh, to the coming birth. They can only be referring to the coming of the Lord as he was coming into the lives of the people to whom uh, John the Baptist spoke and as he is, please God, coming into our lives again at the second coming and as he comes into our lives now with this word and this Eucharist. Can we hear those words of John the Baptist uh, with that greater, perhaps, clarity that he is calling us to prepare for the coming of the Lord. And it's that on which we focus during this part of Advent.